Currently, large corporations control healthcare data, and our goal is to give that power back to the people. I'm here in the Cayman Islands for the D10E conference, and yesterday I was able to see some amazing presentations from a bunch of companies that are doing some really awesome stuff. And one of those companies was a group called AMSIS Blockchain. I'm here with the CEO, Aman Quadri, and you're going to tell us a little bit about this company that is really trying to disrupt the medical records industry. Yeah, so we're currently trying to create a uh, medical record platform we call AmChart, and it's a universal medical record. There are plenty of us that have gone to the doctor's office and filled out paperwork and then have been referred to another person and filled out the same paperwork again. Or s families have taken their children to the doctor's office but then can't tell somebody what medications they're on or what diagnostics they've done or lab work. And so what we're trying to do is create this universal medical record that can carry anywhere throughout the world and you have all your data on hand so if there's ever a problem or a concern, you can show it to your doctor right away. You have a great video that explains this product. What if you could maintain all of your health information in one place and quickly and conveniently provide access to trusted providers? Welcome to AmChart. AmChart is poised to revolutionize healthcare and wellness by putting accurate, accessible patient information back in the hands of patients like you. We create one record. So one record with doctors, physicians, hospitals, providers, everybody being able to put that data onto one simple, simplified re record that you can carry on a, on a mobile application or be able to log in from your computer. So the actual doctors and the hospitals will be able to put information on this record? Absolutely. So currently, doctors use electronic health records and they subscribe to these different platforms. Ours is no different. We don't want to make that a barrier of entry. So doctors, providers, pa you know, patients will all be able to log in. Our system equips you to access and update your medical records while your healthcare providers can subscribe to our secure platform for easy access without the frustrating constraints of legacy systems. Now we're sitting in the Cayman Islands, and so I've traveled from Texas, and if I had an injury, I'd like to be able to go to the hospital and say, hey, here's my records, here's what I'm on, make the best decision for me, uh, instead of having to wait for records or being more conservative in care. Currently, in the United States, if we're using that as an example, two major companies own 50% of the records in the entire United States. And so what they do is they silo data, they keep it to themselves, and they actually sell part of that data to other companies, but that's your data. You should be allowed to earn off of it. So our goal is, is if you give permission for those organizations to have that data, we do a pass-through. Those, those monies that come in get passed along to you in the form of tokens in our, in our system. So rather than companies being able to take advantage of your data that you're providing, instead you own that and you can do with it what you want. Absolutely. If you don't want to give access to it, you don't have to. But if you want to and you want to earn for it, you can. The doctors can put information on this record, but the patient controls who actually gets to see that information. Absolutely. For the longest time, they've never had control. And so we want to give that control back to the patient. Why do you need a blockchain to solve this issue? Blockchain has a, several different features. One, it's to create security throughout, uh, throughout our data. The other thing with it is, is to create that immutable trust, right? So we want to make sure that once something goes on a ledger, it never can be changed. And unfortunately, in the healthcare industry, there are a lot of changes that happen to health records all the time. Why do changes happen? Well, one, because doctor's offices and even hospital groups actually are looking to avoid medical malpractice. So they make these changes. I've seen them before in medical reviews. So they're trying to protect themselves. So if we can make sure that no data ever gets changed, then we know exactly what's happened to a patient. Why is decentralization important to you? Well, I've been in the industry for a long, long time. And so what I've seen is companies that hoard data and don't allow it to be shared. So we're supposed to Seven years ago, we were supposed to have all the data be able to be interoperable, but nobody has done that. My goal is if we can decentralize, decentralize it all, then, then it takes the power away from all these mega companies and gives it back to who it belongs to. And that data also remains anonymous, so it's not necessarily uh, identifiable to you. Absolutely. Anything that has your name on it will actually be placed on a HIPAA compliant cloud. Those things that don't have your name uh, will actually go on to a permission blockchain that allows for you then to give permission for any pharmaceutical company, healthcare company, doctor's office, or whatever that wants to use that data, they can. What is a HIPAA compliant cloud? Well, a HIPAA compliant cloud is, by rules, a way to make sure that anything that has your name or identifying value can be safe and secure. We don't ever want that to come out to the general public. 
And you're currently working on completely decentralizing the platform so that it's not in a cloud protected by a company. It's all protected by blockchain and encryption. Absolutely. At this point in time, there's no true public blockchain that protects it. So what we've done is we've created a hybrid model. Now we're working on a public blockchain that eventually will have those security features that allows us to put everything on the public ledger. Why was this issue important to you? Why did you want to go into this industry to try to solve it? For the last 20 years, I've been a practicing physical therapist. And for the last five to seven years, I've been a consultant working on the back end to help doctor's offices implement electronic health records, implement medical billing practices. And these were the pain points we saw all throughout there. It's very expensive to use existing technology, but as blockchain technology has come to the forefront, it's allowed us to be able to get into that space and try to solve this major issue. You also have a background in tech as well. Correct. So originally in the late 90s, I started in tech. Uh, and then before the dot-com bus sold the company and went into healthcare, uh, did my master's and then doctor of physical therapy, began practicing, but since saw, saw those same issues in my own practice. And so you always want to try to fix those things. Uh, so in about 2010, I started working with AMSA's group itself to create this healthcare division to try to solve those problems. Your platform is almost ready for people to start playing with and testing out. How can they get involved with this? You can set up your own patient profile, start adding basic things like medications and allergies and start seeing how it works on the blockchain. And then pretty soon right after that, we're going to be able to have you download our mobile app from the App Store. And then you can start taking your Fitbit, your Apple Watch, or any other device that we provide you the list for and connect them together so that you can move all that data over to your own record. With AmChart, wellness is at the forefront as you and your healthcare providers leverage the most accurate records for documenting diagnoses and treatments, as well as monitoring your vitals in real time through connected devices on our mobile app. We utilize a mobile application that has what we call IoT devices and wearables integrated into it. So let's say you were working with your doctor and he says, we need to get your blood pressure to a manageable level and you're taking your medications regularly. If you use your blood pressure cuff device on our system, it automatically puts that data in your mobile app and then it goes into the medical record itself where it gets written in. So when the doctor opens it up and sees for 14 days straight, you've been taking your blood pressure medication and you're just going down, you get awarded. So it's hard to beat that system, really. And you're using smart contracts to uh, determine this? Correct. So it gets written in the smart contract, which then gets written in your you know, health record itself. What we want to do is proactively manage your health. So we're developing a machine learning AI platform that'll take all that data and create a patient profile. And from it, we can start noticing trends towards certain health issues that we want to prevent. The biggest ones that we're targeting right now are obesity, diabetes, and hypertension which are some of the easiest disease processes to actually control if you can manage it. And so our goal with it is, is our engines will be able to predict that you may have those issues and send alerts to your doctor to try to get you on a program before it becomes an issue. I presume that doctors won't be too happy about this though. I know that companies such as 23andMe had issues because it gave the patient, heaven forbid, the patient the ability to uh, you know, do their own diagnoses right. and uh, make their own decisions. Do you think you're gonna run into hurdles uh, if you're giving more power to the individual in managing their own health? Well, we've talked to a couple of large you know, physician groups already and they feel like that actually having more data is helpful because what's happening now is that they're having to see more and more patients for less and less time. So the rule of thumb is, is that we see more patients to make less money. That's what doctors say. And so our goal with it is if they have more information up front and more information in that health record that they open up, then they can make a better decision long term for the patient's care. Earn reward incentives when meeting health goals. We feel like the patients or the clients themselves should be awarded for everything that they do as part of their health. So we incentivize them as part of our program. So you build your medical record, you're in tokens. If you uh, follow a doctor's plan to work on some of your health issues and, and change those things for the better, again, you earn you know, tokens in our economy. If you give permission uh, to your data to be used for medical research and pharmaceutical companies. Again, you earn, earn tokens. And what can those tokens be used for? We partner with a blockchain loyalty company, so you can move it over there. So what you uh, you know earn throughout the year can maybe buy you enough gift cards to pay for all your Christmas shopping, right? Sounds nice. Use these tokens to trade for shopping, dining, travel, and more by taking a proactive role in your own wellness and healthy lifestyle. What kind of regulatory hurdles have you come up against? Because I presume that the government has certain rules in of what they want to see in terms of medical records. Well, currently, 
the government itself through a couple of people like uh, the VA and some other ones are actually looking at blockchain tech as a possible solution to their issue. Uh, there have been the recent, uh, golly, I think they spent $3.8 billion the government did integrating a new electronic health record into their government system that has not worked. And so, so now they've shifted. And so, in fact, one of our advisors that sits on our board has developed a couple of the programs that they have. And so now he's helping us to possibly use this as a tool for a government health system. So your aim is to create a system that actually works and to say, hey, we improved upon the model, right. use our system. Well, I don't need to spend $3.8 billion to develop a system. I feel like we can get there much easier and provide a simpler platform that allows the government to even get their records in a, in a timely fashion. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.